I'm going to show you how to make this interesting necklace set using everyday zippers. I keep tons of zippers. As you can see, I keep my zippers in a nice closed-in container. And as you see, I have all these zippers. And I'm going to work today with the burgundy zipper. I like to start with a simple sketch. And as you know, anytime you're designing, you start with the sketch. But by the time you finish, you may re redecorate it and you may have something totally different. This is a 36 inch zipper. Of course, we won't use all of that. And I'm gonna start by measuring um, the length that I want my base of my necklace to be. So I'm gonna measure 27 inches. And I'm just gonna put a pin right there to mark it. And what's gonna happen is this is going to end up being the chain this is going to be this portion of the necklace itself, the base. But for starters, I'm going to go ahead and cut my zipper. So I'm going to cut that off and we can use that for something else. And then to, to make the chain, what I want to do, because this is a little too wide for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the zipper and I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to, once I fold it in half, I want to make sure when I fold it, I want the the edge of the zipper here, the, the cording section or the ribbon section of the zipper, I want it to fall just behind the zipper itself and that just makes me have a, a narrower chain. So I'm going to use my zipper foot on the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew that down. Well, I've stitched down the extra flap on the zipper so that I would have more of a, a defined necklace look. So you see it looks, it's not as wide. So now you see we're getting that nice little necklace look. So now I'm going to take this leftover piece that I cut off. I decided I was going to cut my pieces about three inches in length. And when you're cutting, you can cut with regular scissors. Just make sure when you cut, you cut in between two of the zipper teeth. So I'm going to use that one as a measurement. I've got my pieces cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close my pieces over and I'm going to stitch the end closed. Now one thing about the zipper ends is they do unravel. So you're just going to run it across the front flame and what it does it sears that end so that it doesn't um, unravel. We're going to flip it like that. I'm going to open them all out. So I got all my pieces here. So we're going to start by constructing the necklace before I put it onto the actual zipper portion of the necklace. So I'm going to start with um, my pieces. Start with three and kind of work your way out. So my three now has become five. And my five now has become seven and I think what I want to do is I'm going to put one on top like so just remember you'll put them everywhere you have where they join let's see put that one there so I'm going to put one here and I'll put one there. So now you see the necklace is beginning to take shape. And then if you were to put the put the actual necklace on it, now you can see how nice that's beginning to look. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another row. Because I've got plenty here. So I'm going to do another row on the side. And then that means I'll have to add another one on the top as well. And then if you wanted to, you could do a third layer. So I've got my needle threaded and I'm going to remove all of the pieces now. We're going to go back to our base layer. And remember we're going to start with one in the center 
two on the sides. And I think I had, we started with seven and I think I ended up with nine. So I'm gonna do my nine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a running stitch and I'm gonna run all these together. So I'm gonna start with the first one. And I'm just doing, um, I'm anchoring it in place. So now I'm going to do a running stitch. And then I'm just going to pick up the next one. And what I want to do is I want to slightly overlap them. Do a stitch that, that's going to let me grab both pieces. And I'm just um, doing an overlap so that they stay together. And then I'm just going to run, do a running stitch over to the other side of that one. And you see how those now stay together. You got two together. So now we're going to do the same thing with this one. Remember to continue to overlap and overlap in the same manner. If you started with the left being on top, always continue that pattern all the way over till you get to the center. When you get to your center one, then you do just the opposite. So I've got my four pieces connected. So now I'm going to take my center piece and using the same pattern with, with the um, left side overlapping. So now I'm going to stitch that one in place. And now we're going to go in the opposite direction. So this time we want to make sure that the right now overlaps the other way so that the center one gets put underneath. So we're just going to continue to join these together. And so one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we need three more. So we're going to put three more on the other side. So now as you see, I've got my first or my bottom row completed. That's the row that has the nine on it. If we were to connect this to the necklace, you see how you have the nine already um, connected there. So now if you, you can stop right here if you wanted to and just go ahead and connect this. But in my case, I want a bulkier necklace, so I'm going to add another row. So I went ahead and done my uh, did my five because remember I had done seven. And as you see, the five sits right in front of the seven. And what I'm going to do, everything is just basting now. I'm going to flip it on the underside. And then I'm going to go ahead and just baste that in place. So I've attached my um, upper piece to the lower piece. And now it's ready. we're ready to attach it to the actual chain or the necklace portion. I'm going to stitch. Now this is the part that gets really, 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 really tricky. I stitch this by hand. If you're okay with it, you can just leave your stitch by hand. But I like to just secure everything myself, so I'm going to run a stitch on the sewing machine. And I say it's real tricky because when I sew, I'm going to have to sew in between each one of the spots here. So I'm going to sew very close and very carefully. And this is where you might want to put on some protective gear for your eyes, just in case your needle decides to break. So now I'm going to actually, I'm turning this straight so I can sew it across. And I'm going to start with a back stitch to anchor it in. I'm not using the uh, foot pedal. I'm using the hand wheel. I'm turning it with my hand. And I'm guiding it along. And I'm just going to rotate it to hit in between the spot. Put the zipper foot down. And this is a process I'll have to take all the way across. So you can either do this by hand or you can do this by machine. So now that that's done, I've got that sewn down. So now we're gonna go back and position it in place for our necklace. And we want I want the teeth to face down. Pin that in place. Then I'm gonna go all the way around. So now that I've encased all of it, I'm going to put my zipper foot on. Now because I have the zipper on there, as you can see, it's in place pretty much where I want it. So now I'm going to use the zipper foot because I'm going to be sewing close to the zipper. And I'm doing the same technique that I was doing when I anchored it down. I'm sewing it by hand using the hand wheel. And I'm just going to sew this all the way across. So I've got the piece attached. And like I said, you can do this by hand. Um, I did mine by machine. I actually recommend you do it by hand unless you're pretty skilled with how to maneuver the sewing machine so that it doesn't um, break your needle. There is our necklace done. So now we're to the point where we want to finish it off. I've tried the necklace on and measured it to my measurement. And then now that I've got it cut, we've got too much zipper up here and we want to take this zipper off. 
So I have my handy needle nose pliers. These are my favorite, very good needle nose pliers. And what I'm going to do is you're going to grab the teeth and you're going to pull them off. I removed all the teeth from the edge of the zipper. So now we're ready to finish this off. And this part we will do by hand. I'm using my favorite um, necklace closures. It's like a little hook and eye. I went ahead and cut off an additional amount of the piece where I took the teeth off and I only left about maybe three quarters to an inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and thread. I'm just going to go ahead and anchor it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrunch this up. Just kind of like scrunch it just a little bit. Just kind of fold it in half. And I'm going to take one piece of my, my necklace closure, one side. And I'm going to fold this down. And then I'm going to take the, the eye portion of the closure and I'm going to put my needle through the eye portion and then I'm going to stitch it down in place just as if you were sewing a hook and eye and we're going to do the same thing for the hook portion as well so now we've got the hook portion on so it's just a matter of hooking the necklace and there our necklace is finished to do our earring I've gotten you know, two more of the little petals, if you want to call them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather the upper edge by hand. And then I'm going to pull it so that it gets tight. So we're just anchoring. We're going to do both pieces that way. So I have both of my pieces done and I've got them finished up to give me a teardrop look. So you're going to take your head pin. You're going to stick the head pin right in the center of the teardrop. And then we're going to take it and kind of fold it up like that. I'm going to do both of them the same way. So now that the head pins are in place, I'm just going to take my um, needle nose pliers and I'm just going to twist the wire because we're going to create a, um, a loop to put the um, earring hook into. Okay, now that we've got them twisted, we've got them both twisted. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make a loop. So we're going to take it and we're going to curl it around to create a loop. But before we do that, we're going to insert it into the hole of the fisheye hook. Okay, now that you got it inserted into the eye of the fisheye hook, I'm going to take it and just curl it down and make a complete circle. And see that it also has like a zipper look as well because it's kind of braided. And there is your earring. So repeat the same thing for the other side. Now you have your, your two earrings. And see that you got your two little zipper earrings to match the necklace.